spirituality. Spirituality has a lot to do with uh, self-development. That makes you uh, capable of using senses beyond the five senses. See, we are not only having five senses, but for material living, we use five senses. Somehow, um, to overcome a lot of things in this world, we need to also utilize senses beyond the five. So if you are able to activate those senses, then you become what we call spiritual. So spirituality um, comes when these senses are activated. Um, it brings about self-transformation. That is what is referred to as being born again being different. Uh, if you are using the five senses, one path has given you these five senses. When you get born again, then the other senses which are inactive, which are dormant, are activated. So that brings you to a new experience in life. When this happens, people have different terminologies. Uh, some will call it impartation. Some will call it anointment. Some will call it being born again. So that birth it's not like the first birth where we come from the womb of the woman. This birth comes about as a result of self-development. When you develop yourself, you reach a point where this change takes place. The senses unused faculties within the human which are dormant are immediately activated and one begins to utilize them and uh, it helps you to go beyond dimensions which are not um, I mean, in ordinary cases uh, they are not uh, transcended but when go through spirituality, you attain spirituality, you become spiritual, then uh, all these uh, situations are overcome, you transcend. You see, uh, science has been trying to extend our senses, the five senses. For example, they've made the microscope and the microscope helps you to see little things that normally you will not see with your naked eyes. Uh, those things exist but you can't see until you are using a lens which we call microscope set in a appliance or microscope. Uh, with telescope you can see things very far which your eyes, ordinary eyes cannot see. So science is trying to extend our senses so that we can see, we can hear what normally uh, we cannot hear. We can feel what normally we cannot feel. So these things, extensions, 
when they are done, not in a physical way like science is doing, but really through self-development. Because if somebody looks through a microscope and he sees uh, the uh, gems and other creatures, little, little creatures, um, it doesn't mean the scientist is self-developed. He remains the same. It's only an extension through material things uh, he has discovered. But uh, in the case of someone who is spiritually developed, it is not by way of um, appliances or material uh, things, but it is true self-development. In other words, the ability to see beyond the present uh, state, the ability to hear beyond what we normally hear, and so on. These abilities are dormant. Dormant means they are inactive sleeping. So you just have to awaken them. And then you can see beyond the normal side. You can hear beyond the normal hearing and so on. So at that state we say you are spiritual. There is no question of being spiritual if there is no self-development. When we talk of spirituality, it's connected more with uh, mysticism. There is occultism and mysticism. But there is difference between the two so much, but people don't know this. A lot of people don't know the difference. In the case of uh, occultism, the person may not be developed, but somehow um, he happens to learn how to uh, interact or communicate with beings, other entities who are using different senses. So you learn to interact with them and uh, you get the benefit of it. So the occultists can tune into different realms and uh, sort of interact. In the case of mysticism, the person, the individual, develops himself. In other words, he awakens the dormant faculties to such a level that uh, he wouldn't even need to depend on any other beings, any other uh, spiritual entities. Because all the potency is within himself. It's a matter of developing it. It's a matter of activating uh, these uh, uh, other aspects of his own nature. The word spirituality has been misunderstood a lot, and the understanding we must have is that there is no spirituality unless there is self-development. And there are levels of spirituality, because when you activate the dormant senses or faculties, you have to 
gain experience in using them. Someone who has activated them is uh, a newborn on that plane or that state or that level. But that's uh, uh, we, when we get born in our physical body, we grow. So the same way when you are born into another state, you have to grow. And as you grow, you approach what normally we call enlightenment. So spirituality, if it's uh, growing, then we are moving towards enlightenment. When we arrive at enlightenment, then it's like the destination. There is nothing more to activate. There is nothing more uh, to awaken within you. So therefore, spirituality becomes a path. Because you're born into it, as a new person, new entity, then you grow, you develop more and more, and finally you arrive at enlightenment. So, uh, this is uh, spirituality. It must be separated from what people call spiritualism. Spiritualism is connected to occultism as much as spirituality is connected to mysticism. When you are practicing or living the lifestyle of spirituality, then you become a mystic. When you are following spiritualism, then you become an occultist. So the two are very different. They shouldn't be confused. We have those who combine the two. Self-development, that is uh, mysticism, and also the knowledge of communication, interaction with other entities in the subject of uh, occultism. But then, uh, the best among all is uh, to practice mysticism that is more natural to us, self-development, And the things in uh, occultism alone, um, places one below a person who is a mystic. A mystic is much ahead of an occultist. So in any case, if somebody combines the two, he has to be very cautious with the occult section because occult being in interaction with uh, the creator realm entities and different forces in the creation we have good and we have bad so for that matter uh, interactions if they are limited to only the good, good forces, then it can be combined with mysticism effectively. But that needs caution. Because in the beginning, one doesn't even know what forces are good and what forces are bad. But if you are under an experienced teacher, then you can combine occultism and mysticism because he will guide you so that 
especially in the occult section you only interact with the good forces you harmonize with good forces you tune in to good forces whilst you are developing that is whilst you are uh, practicing mysticism This is the situation. Now, if somebody develops uh, mysticism, in other words, he's, he's uh, living the lifestyle of spirituality, he becomes very likable because it's, uh, when you are self-developing, all the good nature within you comes out. You become very loving, very peaceful, very harmonious, and all the so-called vices of life are a distance from you. It's amazing the bliss that comes to you when uh, you tread the path of spirituality. It becomes so blissful within yourself. It's unfortunate that people neglect spirituality because when they do so, within them there is some emptiness, there is some missing link. And no matter what you get externally, materially, there is no fulfillment. You cannot have peace simply by talking about peace. Peace is in the innermost side of the entity. That is where it is found not outside. So true spirituality you'll be able to bring it out. That is a transformation, that is a development. It comes out. Joy or bliss is in the innermost part of you. It's not something found outside. So if you are giving a million years to search for happiness, peace, and all these things outside of you, you never get it. You never get it. But given a short time that you really use the techniques, the keys to go inside, the keys to self-development, then uh, one comes out with that peace, the love, the joy that you are looking for. So um, we need to um, find a way to adopt a lifestyle that has spirituality as the basis. In fact, what is missing in religion is spirituality. It should be the basis. If it is there, that kind of religion will transform a lot of souls, a lot of people. But religion minus spirituality is ineffective. It's not effective in transforming people. And it's very clear. So, uh, it is advisable that from morning to evening, our lifestyle should be based on spirituality.
practical teachings on this can be found in, if, if one is really determined there is a saying that when the student is ready the master appears in other words God or whatever term you would like to use nature we make will surely make available uh, a way for you to attain what you really want so among the things that we should want spirituality should be number one people don't have the uh, seeking spirit we need to be seeking so if you have the seeking spirit then you have uh, begun you have begun the journey and uh, what you should seek first seek first spirituality like in the uh, Bible it talks about seeking first the kingdom and the rest will be added people don't have the seeking spirit for the kingdom but when we talk of kingdom when there is a, a kingdom Supposedly, we should have a king. So, the spirit must rule. So, the spirit is the king in this zone that we find ourselves. It must rule over the senses, it must rule over everything. And seek, when you are told to seek the kingdom, the kingdom is within you. So, once again in the scriptures, it tells you the kingdom of God is within, not without. So, it's not something to be sought outside. So, if one is sincere in seeking, he will by all means come across the uh, guidance that will lead him to such a solution. The Sambra Enlightenment Center um, is doing this. Say Sambra, Sambra, that means return or come back. Okay. Each person had all these spiritual senses active until we entered into this uh, physical body and the spiritual senses have become dormant and uh, we are having these five other senses that we are utilizing for the sake of experiencing the material existence but then if you return to your former self, where you were using the spiritual senses, then it will lead you to enlightenment. That is why uh, this center is called Sambra Enlightenment, Return to Enlightenment. Once again in the scripture it tells you Unless we become like children, we cannot go to the uh, go to heaven or the kingdom of God. Let me say. So, when we begin as babies, our spiritual senses are still uh, functioning side by side with the material. Then, by and by, the spiritual senses close, and the material senses come forward fully so if you want to go to the kingdom 
what do you do? You reactivate the uh, spiritual senses then you become like a child again. You become like a baby. So we will bring this to this point. I hope uh, you understand what is spirituality. Thank you.